Hello friends. Welcome to this new series called The Franciscan Stories. This is episode number 4. I'm going to tell you an incredible story, amazing, mind-blowing story of St. Rose of Viterbo. When I was preparing for this video, I myself found it difficult to believe the things that she did just amazing, mind-blowing, out of this world. We have heard great stories God performed in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but in the life of Rose of Viterbo, my God. So watch this video to know this amazing story of Rose of Viterbo. She lived only 17 years here on this earth, but amazing. Do stay with me. And if you like the video, do share the link with others. Don't forget to like and comment. Thank you. We do not have much details about the life of St. Rose. Whatever little information I found, I'm placing before you. Rose was born in Viterbo in Italy around 1233 and died at the tender age of 17 or 18 years in 1251. Reports say that even as a baby, she showed great signs of love of God. She loved everything about God. Even as a little girl, her faith in God was so strong. It seems when Rose was only Three years old, she resurrected her maternal aunt who was dead and lying in the coffin. Can you believe that? A three years old girl bringing to life a dead person, just like what Jesus did to his friend Lazarus. The family was standing around the coffin weeping aloud. Deeply moved by the sorrow of her relatives, little Rose went to the coffin, raised her eyes to heaven and prayed silently. Then she placed her little hand on the body of her deceased aunt and called her by name. The dead woman immediately opened her eyes and reached out to embrace her little niece who had raised her to life again. Mind blowing, so difficult to believe. When she was just seven years old, St. Rose retired to a little cell in her father's house. Seven years old children play around, but here this little girl is retiring to pray. There she spent almost all her time in contemplation and in practicing rigorous penance. Can you believe that? A seven years old girl doing rigorous penance. She prayed and did much penance for the conversion of sinners. What does a seven year old child understand about sin and repentance and penance? No wonder Jesus said, let the little children come to me for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. The child not only prayed and did penance, but Rose also entertained a great compassion for the poor. She always tried to save some food to give to the poor. One day it seems when she left the house with some bread in her apron, she met her father who asked her in, in curt fashion what she was carrying off. The frightened child opened her apron and fragrant roses were found in it. No wonder her name is Rose. If you are already mesmerized by the deeds of such a young child, what will you say about her teenage life? St. Rose was not yet 10 years old when the Blessed Mother of God instructed her to join the Third Order of St. Francis. The Third Order is for lay people which was called SFO or Secular Franciscan Order. Now it is renamed as OFS. As a teenager, it seems she had a vision of Christ crucified. She saw Christ suffering immensely. In the vision, she learned that it was because of our sins that Jesus was suffering. So this is what she did. She put on the Franciscan habit, took the cross in her hand and went on streets preaching and asking people to repent. Don't you think this is hard to believe? Which teenager today would do such a thing? Even ordained priests and professed nuns do not go on the streets preaching that way. It is said that the people came in crowds to hear this little teenager. The stone on which she stood to preach was seen to rise in the air and she was sustained there by a miracle while burning words issued from her lips. Many were converted by her preaching. Well, she not only got herself involved in spiritual religious exercises and social reformation, but she also got involved in politics. She was not afraid to speak the truth and to stand by the truth. At that time, her native city Viterbo was in revolt against the Pope. When she took the Pope's side against the Emperor Frederick II of Germany who was controlling her region, she and her family were exiled from the city. They went to another place as refugees. 
When finally the Pope side won in Viterbo, Rose was allowed to return. All those who say priests should not get involved in politics must listen to the story of the saint. Religious people, my friends, have a duty to stand for truth and to defend the church. Well, her story is not over. In such a short span of life, she did unbelievable things. This time when she was about 15 years old, she converted her sorcerers who had done much harm among the inhabitants. When her initial attempts to convert her failed, this is what she did. Rose had an immense pile of wood prepared in the public square. Fire was set to it and Rose stepped into the fire and mounted to the top of the pile. She remained untouched for three hours in the midst of the burning flames, singing the praises of God. The sorceress now cast herself at Rose's feet and was sincerely converted. We had heard about the three guys in the fire in the Old Testament, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in chapter 3 of Daniel, who were thrown into a fiery furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, for refusing to bow down to the king's images. I never thought such a miracle would be repeated again, but Rose did it. After her return to Viterbo from exile at 15 years, she had the desire to enter the convent of the poor class. For some reason, she was not admitted. Well, said Rose, you will not receive me while I am alive, but you will receive me after I am dead. Since she could not enter the convent, she and several of her companions intended to live as a community in a secluded place. The ecclesiastical authorities, however, did not approve of the plan and Rose returned home. She died two years later, filled with the joyous desire of being united with her God. Two and a half years after her death, she appeared three times to Pope Alexander IV, who was in Viterbo at the time, and told him to have her body removed to the convent of the poor Clares. It was done. That's how she fulfilled her prophecy that she will enter the convent of poor Clares after her death. You know something? When a tomb was opened, her body was found incorrupt and it has remained in that condition to this day. Miracles are constantly occurring at her tomb. Although her skin is dark, the body of the saint is still flexible and the internal organs in good condition. In 1921, the heart was removed to be placed in a reliquary for a procession and it was found to be unblemished and perfectly intact at that time. Pope Callistus III canonized her in 1457. Her feast day is celebrated on September 4 every year. St. Rose of Viterbo is a patron saint of florists, flower growers, people in exile, refugees, people rejected by religious orders and our Franciscan youth. You know, in her honor in Viterbo, people out of love and gratitude for her carry in procession the mission of St. Rose. It is the transportation vehicle which carries a 28 meters high tower illuminated with 3,000 small electric lights, 880 candles and 100 volunteers to carry the statue tower. My dear friends, we come to the end of this short but amazing unbelievable story of St. Rose. May God through the intercession of St. Rose bless us with great faith and devotion. Thank you my friends for watching this video. See you soon in the next video. God bless you.